I just, Hi, want, I just to want to explain, to explain how a fuel pump, pump primer works on a two-stroke two carburetor. carburetor. So this primer bulb here. And, and I just want to explain exactly how it primes the carburetor, which areas are primed, and I'll explain the inlet and the return of the fuel. Vitally important that these primer bulbs work on these little two-stroke carburetors, creating a vacuum and not having any little piercings or little damage on them. So looking at this drawing now, that's basically this carburetor in that position. If we could cut this carbon off, its function and structure would look something like this. So we've got the venturi there, as it is there, and the throttle mechanism, as it's shown there. The primer bulb down here, as shown there. The fuel hasn't actually gone through it yet, so the carb's empty. We've got the fuel tank here, and we've got a little fuel filter. We've got the inlet pipe here that comes to the carburetor from the tank, which spills out into the fuel pump area. Then we've got the tube that goes to the back of the needle valve. Then above here we've got the metering area with the needle valve and the lever. And then we've got the metering diaphragm there. Then we've got a, another tube here, like a suction tube, which comes in to the actual primer bulb itself. We've got a little valve there, and we've got the return here, which goes back to tank. As it stands, and if you could imagine this is a carburetor that hasn't actually run yet, let's say it's on a new machine or it's just been cleaned out. And at the moment there's no fuel primed inside this carburetor, it's just air. I've just illustrated these little blue dots here as air, so you can see where the air is at the moment. So when we start to prime it, we'll start to push this air out and fill it with fuel. There's a very important valve that sits there, and there's one there, there, and there. And I'll explain how they work as the fuel comes in. Once fuel's been filled in the tank, we can then start to prime it through. And it's generally recommended on new machines to prime the pump around three times. Sometimes more, sometimes less, but it's generally three times. So we'll come to our new machine and we'll press the primer bulb the first time. So if we look what's happened here, we've pressed in the primer bulb, and when we do so, we can see a directional change in airflow. Rather than it just sitting there, like it is in this compartment, in this compartment obviously here, which is the primer bulb itself, and in this return pipe area here, you can see there now it's moving. So basically what we've done by pushing in the bulb, we've pushed in air through into the return area, and it's going up the return pipe and back to tank. That's where the air's going at the moment. Now the air also goes down this little suction pipe here. It goes down here and into the metering area here. But when it gets into here, it can't go any further because the metering needle is fast on its seat. So it can't go any further than this point here. So it can't go into this point and go that way if you like, it stops in the metering area here. And basically what it's doing as well, it's keeping this metering diaphragm up so that the metering lever can stay up at the back and keep the metering needle fast on its seat. So all the air really is moving this way. It's gone through a one-way valve there and it's heading this way into the return. So I'll quickly show you in perspective now that one-way valve. So let's take this off, take the bulb off. If we take a look there, we can see a little rubber grommety type thing but that there is actually the one-way valve I've just mentioned so if we just take a look at that a bit closer if I can take it off that there is the little valve and it's a one-way valve it allows fuel to go through that way but won't allow for it to come back so that's the little valve it allows fuel to go that way but won't allow it to come back through so this is showing the primer bulb depressed in like that and it's when we let it out that the magic actually happens so we let it out and as the primer bulb comes back, it creates this vacuum down this vacuum tube. And just showing you the suction tube here on the carburetor. If we were to take the primer bulb off again, just take that off into this area here. You've got there, as I've shown you, the rubber grommet there. That is the one-way valve. But if we have a look again, if we take it off, we can see there that's where the return fuel goes back to tank. But if we take a look here, we've got a little tiny hole there at the side. That is that area there of this suction tube. So the fuel is drawn into the bulb here through that tube and then out that way through that area there. And if we just look a little further and take this off, we'll see underneath it that the suction tube hole there that we've just talked about comes from here. There's a little hole there. And that hole, via the diaphragm of course, is connected to this hole here. And this hole goes right through and comes out here at the metering diaphragm area. And in fact, if we look there, we can see straight through it. So that's that tube there, the suction tube. And of course, as it's shown there, when the primer bulb pulls back this side, it sucks in down there. And it's that suction 
that sucks down on this metering diaphragm like that, using this part of the diaphragm to push the lever downwards. Now because the primer bulb and the metering area is directly linked via this vacuum tube, the vacuum is felt here. So as the bulb comes back, the vacuum is drawn in there and it draws this diaphragm downwards. And when it draws this diaphragm downwards, it pushes down the back of the metering lever. So the metering lever does that and lifts the metering needle off its seat. That vacuum going that way up into the metering area, it's actually drawn through this way like that. And the metering area, as we know, is under here. So there's the metering diaphragm there. And if we take that off, there's the gasket underneath and here's the needle valve and the lever. So that's this area. Pulling air this way, which goes through this little fuel vein here, and it lifts this little one-way valve off its seat, and it's pulled this way, and then lifts this little valve off its seat and goes that way, and that's how it's drawn through. And as it's drawn that way, it lifts this valve off its seat here. And of course, all of this area is connected, and when it draws the air that way, it starts to draw this fuel in out of the tank into this area. So that valve's now off its seat, allowing fuel into the fuel pump area. And if we take a look into perspective, if we take the primer bulb off here, I've just undone the screws, and then we've left with the top here, so we'll take that off, take the gasket off, and there we are, there's the fuel pump diaphragm, the actual fuel pump area is there, that's the bit that pumps the fuel, and that's that part there, that's what I'm referring to, that actual part there. But the whole diaphragm is there, the whole diaphragm. And as we can see here, the inlet fuel pipe, that's the inlet coming in here, and there's the little one-way valve there, and that's this little valve here. The fuel, which is coming this way, comes up this pipe, so that is this pipe, and it comes out underneath that little valve, out of that little hole there, and comes out that way, over the fuel pump diaphragm area. And the fuel can't go back where it came from because that valve will shut. So there's the one-way valve, that's that. And just important to mention that the air this side now is still, because it can't come back this way. That's drawing this way, and the air can't come back this way. It can only come back through the suction vein here. So now showing the primer bulb coming out the rest of the way, because the primer bulbs now come out right back, that vacuum has sucked up even further. And more of that fuel has been sucked into the fuel pump diaphragm area. And again, it's come through the one-way valve, it's spilled out into this area here, and it's come out here above the fuel pump diaphragm, it's gone this way, and then it's gone through this fuel vein here, via this little one-way valve on the diaphragm, and it's gone through and out through this little valve on the diaphragm and it's gone this way up towards the bottom of the needle valve. So just going through that again, the fuel's coming this way so it's coming up this pipe here, it's coming from underneath this little flap here which is that one-way valve there, so that's a one-way valve. And the fuel's coming that way over the fuel pump diaphragm, so it's coming over this fuel pump area, and it's going down into this hole. So it comes right across and down through this hole, down there. And it surfaces again, so it comes up from a little hole underneath the flap there, and that flap there is here, so it's come underneath here and out, and it's gone that way, and that is this way here now to the bottom of the needle valve. And we might think, well, what's stopping the fuel from just flowing all down here and going down any hole at any time rather than just specific sections? Well, the lid here, the lid specially designed with different compartments and this gasket here only allows it in the right area at the right time. It passes it from here over to here then to here in these little recesses underneath. And turning it over, and the metering lever is now in that position with the needle valve open. So the primer bulb is right back now and there's no movement of air at the moment. This is just momentarily prior to pushing it again. And as you can see, the air is all stationary and the fuel stationary. But what you can see is the fuel is starting to prime nicely inside and it's staying there awaiting the next pump. You can see there the valves from the little diaphragm there are on the seats and also the valve there is shut of the grommet because there's no movement either way. So we're pressing that bulb again now and look what's happened. We've got air that's forced through here. That little valve there, that little grommet valve opens and pushes air that way. Now air is also pushed that way because there's nothing stopping the air being pushed that way but when the air does go that way it pushes that metering diaphragm back up and allows this lever to flick up at the back and then now it's pushing down on this needle valve 
and it's stopping any pressure coming back this way, pushing any fuel back. So it can't go any further than here. Now the primer bulb coming back now, the same as the last time, it's creating a vacuum through the suction tube here, and that's pulling the metering diaphragm down, lifting the metering needle off its seat, and the fuel's coming further in this time, filling this metering diaphragm area here. As we've said about this one-way valve, the vacuum there has shut that valve, so no air can seep back this way, it can only come this way and it's sucking the fuel in nicely. The primer bulb's come back much further now, right back, and the fuel has been sucked down even further, and it's starting to fill the bulb. But if we make a note of what's happening here, all the valves are open, we've got fuel coming down this way, it's going over the fuel pump diaphragm, it's going in through the little hole, down the fuel vein and out, down to the metering lever, into the metering area here, underneath the metering diaphragm, down the suction tube, and into the fuel bulb. As I've said before, there's no air allowed to suck back this way. So now the primer bulb is right back once again. Everything's stationary. So the air's stationary, the fuel's stationary. The fuel can't seep back because it can't seep back past the needle valve and it can't seep back past these little valves here. So all the carburetor is starting to prime nicely. Okay, pushing the primer bulb again, we can see here, because the primer bulb had fuel in it before, we're actually now pushing fuel out. We've pushed all the air out and we're now pushing some fuel out that was in the primer bulb before. And it's going that way to the return towards tank. Of course, we've got pressure fuel going back that way. It's now fuel in there rather than air. But of course, the fuel pressure is keeping that diaphragm again right up, allowing the lever to stay up at the back because of the spring and allowing the metering needle to sit fast on its seat. So the fuel's gone through that little valve there and it's going that way because we've pressed the bulb. Now releasing that bulb again as it comes back this way, it's drawing back on this suction tube, pulling the metering diaphragm down once again, allowing the metering lever to come down at the back and up at the front, moving the metering needle off its seat so it's drawing fuel that way, drawing fuel through and that way once again, coming all the way down here like that. And because this is all fuel in here now, that's all that's moving, that's all that's sucking in, there's no air left in here. The little rubber one-way valve's on its seat there, so no fuel can come back this way, back into the primer bulb, it can only come this way. The bulb's come back a lot further now, right back, and it's completely filled the bulb now. The fuel's completely filled the bulb, it's took this route through the suction and it's completely filled the bulb and now the next time it's pressed it will just be completely fuel all the way through back to the petrol tank. So if we have a further look and just press it again now as I said all that fuel was in there only fuel inside that primer bulb it's all gone this way and it's filled the return pipe back into the fuel tank and now it's returning it all into the fuel tank. You can see there that the metering diaphragm is back on its seat because of the pressure that way, stopping the metering lever from lifting and it's all gone that way back into tank. We let go of the primer bulb and it's sucking this time, it's all fuel, so all that's happening now, because it's sucking back, it's sucking back only fuel. And it's all coming through this way as I've explained, through the one-way valve, over the top of the fuel pump diaphragm, through, down the hole, through the vein, out again, down to the bottom of the needle valve, right through, down the suction tube, and back in that way. And there we are, that's the carburetor fully primed. This is just illustrating the final stage of the primer bulb opening because it's still got some suction there with the metering diaphragm still open and the needle valve still open, so everything's sucking through still, like that. This is now the carburetor fully primed. And now at this stage, if this carburetor was actually fitted to a machine, it could now be started. We'd put the choke on and we could start the engine. Because now what we've achieved is we've got fuel up and we've filled all of the area, we've primed all of these little fuel veins and we've primed the metering area where the fuel jets allow fuel into the Venturi. That's the moral of the story there, we've filled that area up nicely. We might think, well why doesn't it just prime and prime down here? Well of course the important bit is we have got to prime this metering area here. That's why this bulb has to draw through this suction vein here from the metering area because the vacuum has got to come from this area in order to fill this area with fuel and then obviously the fuel keeps going through and out. So if we look at this in operation now, imagine the engine's running and the engine now has drawn fuel through this jet. We might say when the primer bulb's pushed in and fuel is pushed back up this way, why doesn't it come out this jet? Well there is a very small valve there on this jet and I can show you there, there it is. That's like a little tiny valve. That's what I'm illustrating when I'm showing you that. The fuel fills this area here, which is here, and when the engine's running, the fuel is sucked down there, and it comes out here. 
and then goes into the engine. Imagine that's what's happening there. Only when the engine's running does that valve open enough to allow fuel to go into the Venturi to mix with the air that's rushing in to atomise it. So if we take a look at how it runs now, let's imagine this is running and it's running at a modest RPM. Fuel's coming in, it's taking this route, it's going through the little valve flaps, it's going across the fuel pump, it's going up through the valve flaps, going through the fuel veins, through the flaps, going down through to the bottom of the needle valve, it's going into the metering area and coming out here into the Venturi, some of it is, but some of it's also carrying on and coming this way and it's coming through into the primer bulb area and it's continuing through to tank. That's why we must always make sure that primer bulbs have got no holes in them. If there's a hole in this, fuel would just seep out. When you start these engines, if there's a problem with the primer bulb, they probably won't start or fuel will gush everywhere. That's because of this system, this vacuum system. It's going to play around with all that vacuum. There'd be no vacuum and that's what's going on. I really hope that's helped explain how a fuel primer bulb works. Thank you for watching.